Welcome back to my channel. For this video, I will discuss hypothesis testing using the probability value approach. Another senior high school statistics and probability topics and also research related lesson. Once again, if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. With the accessibility of computers, calculators, and statistics software, the probability value or the p-value approach has become popular. We have learned that in hypothesis testing, the rejection region and the value of alpha are selected before conducting the test. The conclusions are also stated by rejecting or not rejecting or accepting the null hypothesis. As I said earlier, Another way of conducting hypothesis testing is by the p-value method. In the process, we evaluate the null hypothesis by assuming it to be true and test the reasonableness of this assumption by calculating the probability of getting the results if chance alone is operating. The obtained probability is called the p-value and the decision is called the p-approach. The following are the decision rule of testing hypothesis using the p-value approach. Number one, if the obtained probability is less than or equal to the critical probability level called the alpha level, then we reject the null hypothesis or HO. In symbol, reject HO if p is less than or equal to alpha. Second, if the obtained probability level is greater than the alpha level, we do not reject the null hypothesis or H sub O. In other words, we accept the null hypothesis. In symbol, do not reject H sub O if P is greater than alpha. Let us now apply the above informations to problem solving. Example 1. Mr. De Los Santos administered an achievement test in his statistics and he used a sample random of 45 grade 12 students whose average is 89 and the sample standard deviation is 10. The population of the student has an average of 85 with a standard deviation of 15. Using the p-value approach and alpha equals 0.05, answer the following. Number 1. Does the sample come from the average population? And number two, is the performance of the sample above average? To answer question number one, we will follow the five steps. Step one, formulating the hypothesis. The null hypothesis will be the population mean of the students who took the statistics test is equal to 85. And the alternative hypothesis will be the population mean of gas students who took the statistics test is not equal to 85. In symbols, H sub O mu equals 85. H sub A mu is not equal to 85. Step 2 is finding the probability for alpha. Since alpha is equal to 0.05 and it does not suggest a direction, therefore it is a two-tailed test. Our given, mu is equal to 85, x bar is equal to 89, a standard deviation of the population is 15, sample size is 45. Step 3, since the sample size is greater than 30, we will use the z-test. And the formula is, z equals quantity x bar minus mu multiplied to square root of n all over delta. By substituting the givens on the formula, we have quantity 89 minus 85 multiplied to square root of 45 all over 15. Simplifying the numerator, 89 minus 85 multiplied to square root of 45, using scientific calculator, we have 26.8328 divided by 15 equals 1.79. And 1.79 is the value of our Z. Since the test is two-tailed, the critical values are the probability of Z less than 1, negative 1.79 or the probability of Z greater than 1.79. And the acceptance region will be the probability of Z between negative 1.79 and positive 1.79. 
1.79. From the Z table, 1.79 equals 0.4633 times 2 equals 0.9266. And to get the probability value, we will subtract that area from 1.0. So we have 1.0 minus 0 0.9266 equals 0 0.073. Step 4, making the decision. Since the computed p-value equals 0 0.073 is greater than the p-value alpha equals 0 0.05, we do not reject the null hypothesis. And for our conclusion, since we did not reject the null hypothesis or we accept the null hypothesis, there is no significant difference between the sample mean and the population mean. The result implies that the sample come from the average population. For question number two, the hypothesis will be our null hypothesis is the same. The population mean of the students who took the statistics test is equal to 85. And our alternative hypothesis will be the population mean of the students who took the statistics test is greater than 85. Greater than signifying the above average. In symbol, we have H sub O, mu equals 85. H sub A, mu is greater than 85. Next, determine the probability for alpha. Our alpha value is equal to 0 0.05. And it is right-tailed because it is uh, greater than. And it is a one-tailed test. Same given. Mu equals 85. X bar equals 89. Delta equals 15. N equals 15. 45, I mean. Same solution of number 1 above, our Z value equals 1.79. It means that the critical value is the probability of Z greater than 1.79 since it is above average. Again, from the Z table, the area for 1.79 equals 0 0.4633. To get the probability value, subtract that from... 0.5000, the result equals 0.037. Next, proceed to the decision making. Since the computed p value equals 0.037 is less than the p value alpha equals 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. For the fifth and last step, drawing the conclusion. Since the null hypothesis is rejected, there is a significant difference between the sample mean and the population mean. The result implies that the performance of the sample is not above the average population. Let's proceed by taking another related problem. Example 2, a random sample of 50 school managers were administered to test to further develop a leadership skills. The sample mean is 86 with a standard deviation of 3. In the standardization of the test, the mean was 83 and its standard deviation was 10. Test for the significant difference using alpha equals 0.07 utilizing the p-value approach. Once again, for our hypothesis of the problem, the null hypothesis will be the population mean of school managers to standardize the test is equal to 83. And the alternative hypothesis will be the population mean of school managers to standardize the test is not equal to 83. In symbols, H sub O, mu equals 83. H sub A, mu is not equal to 83. Our alpha in the given problem is 0 0.07 and the test is non-directional or two-tailed tests. The givens on the problems are mu equals 8, x bar equals 86, delta equals 10, and n equals 50. Since 50 is greater than 30, these statistics will be used. Its formula Z equals quantity x bar minus mu times square root of n all over delta.
Substituting the given, we have quantity 86 minus 83 multiplied to square root of 50 all over 10. Simplifying the numerator, quantity 86 minus 83 multiplied to square root of 50 using calculator, we have 21.21 .21 divided by 10 equals 2.12. Since the test is non-directional or two-tail test, it means that the peak critical values are Z is greater than 2.12 or Z is less than 2.12. To get their middle values, we have the P values of Z is between negative 2.12 and 2.12. From the Z table, the value of 2.12 equals 0.4830. Multiply it by 2, the product is 0 0.9660. To get the p-value, we will subtract 0 0.9660 from 1.0. And the difference is 0 0.034. To make the decision, since the computed p-value equals 0 0.034 is less than the p-value 0 0.07, we reject the null hypothesis. And to draw the conclusion, since we reject the null hypothesis, there is a significant difference between the sample mean and the population mean. It means that the sample belongs to another population with a mean not equal to 83. Third and last problem for this video, an experimental study was conducted by a student researcher to determine if the new time slot has an effect of their performance in statistics. 60 randomly selected learners participated on the study. The sample mean was 80 with a standard deviation of 3. In the standardization of the test, the mean was 75 and the standard deviation was 20. Test the hypothesis is effective using p-value approach using alpha equals 0 0.03. Again, the hypothesis on the problem are Null hypothesis, the population mean of students who participated on the experimental study is equal to 75. The alternative hypothesis will be The population mean of students who participated on the experimental study is, is not equal to 75. In symbols, HO mu equals 75, H sub A mu is not equal to 75. The given alpha value equals 0 0.03. Since it is non-directional, it is a two-tailed test. Givens, mu equals 75, x bar equals 80, delta equals 20, n equals 60. Since the value of n is 60 and greater than 30, we will use a z-test. Substituting the values on the z-test formula, we have quantity 80 minus 75 square root of 60 all over 20. Simplifying the numerator, 80 minus 75 multiplied to square root of 60, we have 38.73 divided by 20 equals 1.94. Since the test is two-tailed, it means that P critical values are Z is greater than 1.94 or Z is less than 1.94. To get their values or total probability, we have Z between negative 1.94 and 1.94. From the Z table, 1.94 is equal to 0 0.4738 times 2 equals 0 0.9476. To get the final p-value of the given problem, 0 0.9476 will be subtracted from 1.0 and its difference equals 0 0.052. To make the decision, since the computed p-value equals 0 0.052 is greater than the p-value alpha equals 0 0.03, we do not reject or accept the null hypothesis. Since the null hypothesis is accepted, the conclusion will be there is no significant difference between the sample mean and the population mean. It means that the new time slot did not affect students' performance in statistics. Once again, if this lesson helps you, please like and to help others, kindly share this video to them.